Mikulov, Council meeting Monday, December 21st, 2015, at 7 p.m. on Auckland Water. Roll call, please. Mayor McLaughlin. Here. Mr. McIntyre. Here. Mr. Reynolds. Here. Mr. Rick Lowry. Here. Mr. Craybacher. Here. Mr. Mike Lowry. Here. Six members present. Thank you. Okay, before we get into the invocation, if you have a cell phone, would you please turn it off or put it on vibrate, please? We are doing an interrupted meeting. And then uh, if you'll all rise, please. We've got an invocation by Councilman John Craybock. Yes. All right, John. Please bow your heads. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time of the year. We just glance back to this whole year. We had some ups and downs, but we knew the one thing is that you were walking with us, even in the bad times. And we thank you for the good times. Heavenly Father, we come, come to our last council me meeting of the year, and we wait for 2016 for, for the excitement. Help us tonight and help the people in, in the world that do not have peace. Help us see what we can do for them to have peace. Lord God, we bless our military. They are away from the house, their families in this time of the year. For you are a mighty God. We love you. Empower us. Give us knowledge tonight. Amen. 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 you join me in pledge. We're going to use the flag up here tonight, if you would. I've been requested that we use the actual flag, so we're doing that. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, thank you all for being here. I'll get through it in an expedited manner this evening. Uh, action on the minutes. A special meeting on November the 18th, 2015. Second. Any questions on the minutes? The minutes? Nothing? If you would, sir. Mr. Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Mr. Craybar? Yes. Mr. Mike Lowry? Yes. Mayor McLaughlin? Yes. Mr. McIntyre? I have to abstain as I was not present at the meeting. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Minutes past five zero one abstain. Thank you, sir. Now we need action over minutes for the regular meeting on December the seventh, two thousand and fifteen. So moved. Second. Can I point out something? Yes, please go ahead. Um, under Steve Trusty, you know there you have six, his sixty to ninety day play. Is that supposed to be play or plan? That's probably plan. Can it be changed? If you insist. Who made the second on that? Okay. Sorry, I didn't know he was going to do that to you. <laughs> Anyone else? <laughs> Any other questions? I'll correct that. Amendments? Okay. Do you call for the vote, sir? Uh, Rick, Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Mr. Craybacher? Yes. Mr. Mike Lowry? Yes. Mayor McLaughlin? Yes. Mr. McIntyre? Yes. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Pass six to zero. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Communications tonight, we have none. We can now go into city manager's report. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council, members of the public. I'd like to share with you the city manager's report. I'm going to start off with the action report. Major project Speedway is open for business. Uh, so thank everyone for being patient while they got that facility up and running. Uh, I stopped in, I uh, met the new staff, and the managers uh, just took a general tour of the facility and the site. It's a beautiful speedway. The landscaping is great. They have a lot of green spaces. I love that. Um, so also inside the store, you're going to see a lot more options, especially with the beverage selections, hot and cold. And they have to do a few extra uh, food options as well. I did speak with the manager about those food sales because that's going to uh, hopefully turn into a cafe and it's all based off those food sales. And they said they are flying off the shelf. So that's a good thing. Um, you will notice a telephone pole in the middle of their parking lot with a box in it. Um, that will be moved last time. I heard it was about five weeks out. Is that still correct? Yes. Yes. Or so AT&T will be moving that uh, in the future. But other than that, stop in and say hi. It's a, it's a great, great bill for, for us. Can I ask a question on that? 
Yes. Uh, I just happened to be looking down the alley today. Are they going to be doing something with that little fencing? That they have like looks like a plastic fence and trees and, and stuff on that. I'd have to go look at. I'll I'll look at it, it and just get back to you. Doesn't look. No. Is it a vinyl fence that's put up? You know, it looks like a vinyl fence, yeah, they, but then they have a tree. It just doesn't look good from there. It's going to bring the fences maybe together. Uh, it will once at and is complete. There's a panel missing for at and to be able to walk through right now. Okay. Anyone else? Any other questions? That? Does that satisfy so I don't have to look yeah. at it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. I just wanted to know sure. what that was. You would like to go forward, sir? Yep, absolutely. We have the Van Crest of New Carlisle, which is family, uh, formerly the Dayview Care Center. I'm going to give Mr. Kiko, let everyone give a construction update on that because they are moving full steam ahead. Mr. Kiko has been visiting the site regularly. Uh, thank you, Mr. Bridge. Um, currently, they, all the demo has been completed. They have touched up some of their existing buildings uh, to get them through the winter. Uh, sometime around January 4th, they will start doing some utility relocations in addition to water and sewer that they need for the expansion. Uh, so then once they get that in and the state fire marshal and our fire chief get that inspected, they will be moving on uh, with concrete slabs and start doing uh, actual new building construction. And I will add, um, that's another great build for the city of New Carlisle. They are definitely expanding their footprint and uh, expanding their bed count. Um, so again, we'd like to extend thanks out to them for investing money, millions of dollars in their our great town. So I'm excited for that to be done as well. And we're going to move on with our finance discussion. Our finance director, Ms. Harris. Thank you, Mr. Bridge, members of council, members of the public that are here with us tonight. We have the November financial report. Total revenue for the month of November was $327,368.65. And the total expenses for the month of November was $396,706.57. So that brings our year-to-date total revenue collected at $4,735,647.88 and our year-to-date expenditures at $4,299,108.93. On the income tax that I was keeping track of, we have the general fund collected for the month of November $77,895.41 and the half percent police income tax levy has collected for the month of November $31,358.71. So our year to date for the general fund on our income tax through the month of November is $959,333.99 and our income tax police levy is $64,940.52. Everything with the poll is done and I listed the rest of our um, normal reports. If there's any questions I can entertain. Council, any questions? Finance Director, yes or no? It says here on the general fund income tax, the 77,000 was uh, done in November. However, you know, the uncollected, you know, uh, the year to date uncollected is 132,000 and somewhat change. Are we going to be able to to make that in, in, in December? You're uncollected. Where you? What page are you on? Very right front page on the summer. I have a total collected. I don't no, have, have a total income. uncollected. You have a year to date uncollected revenue of 132,874. <coughs> Very top top box. Third. This one? No. You're I'm sorry. John, that's the difference between the estimated revenue oh, and the total that's revenue. The, that's left. our total revenue in that top box, but, not the income tax alone. But if you, if you add those together, that's what that's what the money is that was budgeted. What I'm saying is, are we going to be able to make enough money for our budget in December? For the, the total, I thought you were talking about the income tax, so I'm sorry I wasn't on the same page. Okay. You're talking about the 132,000? Right. Of, we're averaging between two and 300,000 a month, so we do expect that to be a little bit over what we anticipated for our total revenue. So you're saying we're going to have more than? In all you the should, funds. You estimate. All the funds estimated. You estimate. Yes. <clears throat> but see, that's fire and so forth also. Water, sewer, Water, sewer street. Fire. I understand. That, that can't be used except for there. I know. Okay, that's just yeah. want to make that it's, point. 
Correct. Thank you. Any other questions, anyone? Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, I do have one comment. I noticed that we're uh, still doing some extra duty police, yes. and that's very good. I hope we continue doing that. So thank you so much for doing that. Thank, thank you. you. And moving on with the city manager's report, our service discussion with uh, Mr. Kiko. Thank you again, Mr. Bridge, Mayor, members of council, members of the public. Uh, just a couple items to update. Leaf pickup is completed. Um, it actually went uh, really well this year. Uh, the way the season worked, the weather um, was perfect for us in that the, most of the leaves dropped quickly. Um, we got that all completed and we're able to haul, I think, but one or two loads off to our sites. Uh, Scarf Nursery and Studebakers both, both accept our leaves and we didn't have to dump a bunch into school to haul at a later date. So the weather really helped us there. Um, Prentice Drive Phase 2 is completed. We are um, we uh, completed all our paperwork with them and we'll then be su sending our, um, our share for that project. Uh, through the project we were able to uh, reduce some cost in that and about $8,000 our share was like $92,000 and now we're down to about $84,000. So um, that's a little less that we will be using out of our levy. I am currently working and about got completed one major road project um, for 2016 to put out for bid. I'm looking to have a possibly a public hearing with the residents on that street to discuss some options of maybe different ways to rebuild this road. If this one goes as planned uh, with the engineer's estimate, with the new dump coming in the street levy, I'm looking to do a second road project this 2016, uh, hopefully. So um, I was able to get one this year and hopefully to try and get two in 2016, which will pretty much use the rest of our levy dollars up. And that is all I have. I can entertain any questions on those or anything going on with the whole city, winter projects, or anything that uh, is going Council, on. Any questions? Yes, sir. And that levy is a permanent levy, correct? Yes. All right, so I'm done check. Anyone else? I, I have one question for you. I'd asked you before about the light at Maine and Lake. It was out of sync. Has that been corrected, do you know? It has been corrected. It was a uh, three loop signal loops were accidentally cut during a curb work. Right. Um, in that time, we had to get it. The Speedway paid for the contractor. It was their mess up. Paid for the contractor. The contractor got in on a Saturday. Um, I'm not sure if you've seen it, but they installed three new loops. But in the meantime, the automatic default is all this, the turn arrows will come on in case there's an, an interruption in some sort of service. So we had Capital Electric in the meantime come out and reduce the arrow times. So at least we were trying to get a little bit of straight line traffic moving. But then once they got the new signal loops put back in, they're back to the original timing that they were before the cut. So everything's, everything's good to go again. Good, thank you so much. Appreciate that. Yep. Any, anyone else? Any other questions, service director? Thank you, Mr. Kiko. Cool. And moving on with the city manager, thank you, Mr. Kiko. And moving on with our uh, city manager report, our fire discussion with Chief Trustee. Good evening, uh, Mayor, City Council, and public. Um, for the month of November, the City of Duke Fire Division answered 82 EMS calls in the city, 18 EMS calls in Elizabeth Township. The fire Division answered seven fire related calls in the city and one in Elizabeth Township. We had three EMS calls answered by mutual aid departments, either Pike Township or Bethel Clark due to our medic already being on a response. Uh, in November and up to date, we brought on seven new employees, four of which are firefighter paramedics. The three others are firefighter EMTs, with one of the EMTs uh, starting paramedic school the first of the year. All but two of them have already completed their orientation time and are working shifts. The two other will, will complete their orientation by the end of the month. Uh, we've made one promotion since, since uh, me picking up fire chief. Effective 28 November 2015, Lieutenant Diana Geiselman will be promoted to the rank of EMS Captain and handle those duties. Uh, we are moving forward with the compressor and cascade system, getting them moved into the station and getting it in service. That's going to take a little bit of time to get it all installed and working properly. Uh, we're in the process of looking at two different grants, one, EMS, uh, one for EMS equipment and one for fire equipment. As of today, today at this time, we've answered 1,352 runs in the city and 167 runs in Elizabeth Township. And both of those are up from last year. Any questions? Yes, Mr. McIntyre. Yeah, I had, a, I had a question about training. It's great to know we're getting some more people on here. Um, 
how are we doing with training? Are people able to get the classes they need, and are they getting the, the funding through the fire department to be able to complete these? Or the the ongoing is what's called a CEU. On their ongoing credit uh, training, uh, there is no real financial burden to them or to the city for that. Uh, we can do those in-house classes. Uh, as I said before, we have a lot of untapped knowledge and experience in the division. At this present time, I have three instructors, state certified instructors that are members of the division. They're able to teach those classes for us. Uh, as far as outgoing classes, uh, we're looking in the, in the next year to incorporate between the, our division and Pike Township, Bethel Clark, Bethel Miami, and Cass Town of incorporating a group fire, division, fire department mm -hmm. training to where we can bring in certain courses for the departments and share the cost through the through the departments. That way, one department stops holding the whole burden of the cost of the training, but the, all the departments are getting the benefit of it. Because not everyone's going to send their whole department to some of these trainings. Uh, because one of the trains we're looking at for this year is an officer one's course for any officers in any of the departments or someone that may be going into the officer ranks. But as of, as of right now, our training is is where it acts where it should be. We're doing good. Yes, yeah, so I contacted. I've had two contacts with uh, state EMS and state fire to check on our CEUs and to check where we're at and we're all good. Great. Anyone else for the chief? Let's go to Mr. Lowry for his hands and head. Thank you. Yes, Chief Trust. Yes, sir. I'd just like to ask you, how is the transition going? Have you made any stumbling blocks, road blocks? Is no, sir, I'll be quite honest with you. I, uh, I feel thoroughly blessed. I've had a thousand times more support than what I thought would be. Okay. Uh, the morale in the department is probably at the highest I've ever seen it. Really? Uh, we had our department Christmas party last night and the station was full uh, with firefighters and their families. Okay. Uh, me, myself and Chief Ritter and Chief Moeller have constant uh, communication with each other. I've promised and guaranteed both of them they, they will always know what I know. And we're in communication with each other. Me and Chief are usually in communication with each other daily. Thank you very much. That's exactly what I want to hear. Yes. yes. Uh, in one of the reports, I remember seeing that, that you said something about captains. You're going to have to promote some of your lieutenants. Yes, sir. Uh, that's, I'm, in the next week to two weeks, I'm going to be putting out two. I'm on the medic. I'm responding with the air. Yeah, <coughs> Are you close to being in service? Yeah, they got another run. Um, Do you need to go? Not yet. Not unless okay. I find what they need. Um, in the next two weeks, I'm going to be putting out two uh, captain's promotions. One will be for a fire training captain, and then the other one will be, which will be a new position for the division that they've never had before, will be a captain for Elizabeth Township Station. That way, I have one officer that's responsible for that station. That way I don't have to call to find out three or four different crews what's going on. I got one person to call and one person to answer for everything at that station. You've never had that before? No, sir. Oh, wow. And I'm also, uh, we'll be backfilling Lieutenant Geiselman's position. As a lieutenant, I'll be backfilling her position with the new lieutenant. Okay. Chief, I have a question for you. Are, yes, sir. When you are promoting these people, are you planning on bringing them here? Yes, sir. So they can... Yes, sir, I am. Uh, I, I feel that that's something that should be done for them. Yes. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yes, sir. Mr. Reynolds, go ahead. Uh, chief Trustee, I just want to thank you. You know, uh, over the weekend, I had my swearing in ceremony, and the, uh, the chief uh, gladly helped out. Uh, his wife made uh, delicious uh, sweets and everything, so definitely want to thank you. And uh, I definitely agree with you about the morale thing. Everyone I saw, all the fire department folks that came in during the swearing in ceremony, had nothing but the senior praises. So uh, I definitely think you're going to do a great job. And, We've talked several times now, and I'm looking forward to working with you for the next four years. Thanks, sir. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Mr. Long. Yeah, one more time. Please. Sure. Thank you. Right. Since you made the statement that you're making a captain for Elizabeth Township, apparently all that is going well. Yes, sir, it is. I've uh, been in contact uh, several times with uh, the trustees. I've already been to their council meeting. Uh, from my understanding, the only thing they're waiting for to sign that contract is for their uh, new trustee to be sworn in in January. And then after that, they see no problem with the contract going forward. Thank you. More good news. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. Anyone else for Chief? Thank you, Chief. Thank you for being here. Go ahead. Thank you, Chief Trustee. And moving on with our uh, city manager report, our police discussion with Deputy Allender. Thank you, Mr. Bridge. Um, 
For the month of November, there were a total of 51 reports taken um, within the city limits. 32 of those reports were taken by a county deputy, 19 taken by one of the new Carlisle deputies. A total of 1,457 miles were patrolled by a new Carlisle deputy over the last month. Um, and then within the calls were 50 miscellaneous calls and then 10 follow-up investigations. Um, as far as traffic information goes, there was a total of 50 traffic stops with 15 citations being issued last month. That included an OVI arrest, six driving under suspensions, um, four parking citations, and three non-injury accidents. And then there were a total of 10 adult arrests made within the city and one warrant filed and one warrant arrest made. Um, as far as special interest calls, um, it kind of gives you a breakdown. There were seven thefts, 19 911 hangups, three telephone harassments, seven verbal domestics, um, four vehicle lockouts, four alarms, and 17 assists within the city. And then um, on a side note, on, de on December 7th, Deputy Miyako Lyons was assigned to the Uniform Patrol Division and will be the third new call deputy when she completes her training. Uh, I believe that they plan on having her training finished by January 18th, um, which is when all of our shift change and stuff happens to, to start out here in New Carlisle. So that's all I have. Questions? Anyone? Yes, sir. That's the trouble with me having this at home, you know, I start reading. Um, I, we got this little crime statistics thing, and one of the things that uh, my pastor and I were talking about was the suicides, you know, in the area. Uh, he was telling me that, that there, was, there was a presentation, I think maybe at Rotary or something, about the suicide, and that they're fine. So, my, my question is, do you see an increase in New Carlisle in the suicide rate? And can, and then the, and also on the same chart, under drug offense, I see 77 to the day. Is there a correlation between that? that you um, yeah, I think so. I can speak for myself personally as far as the suicide attempts I've been on. Um, I, I would say every all but one of the attempts I've been on since I've been out here in, in July um, have been drug related. And whether that's been, you know, on purpose or an accidental heroin overdose or accidental drug or, overdose, um, you know, they, they send us out, you know, the, the spreadsheet every month. But I do think that there is a huge relation between the two. And um, it, it, it's kind of hit or miss as far as are they going up or are they going down. Um, I went through a seven-day period where I went on four in one week. And then I went three weeks without one at all. Um, I think it comes with the drugs, you know, you hear there's bad batches going around and basically what that means is when the drugs come into any city or township or village, um, you know, that there's, there's different people making and manufacturing these drugs and it, it tells a lot about the batch that makes its way in. So you'll see a large amount in one small period of time and then you may go weeks without another one. Um, but I, I do believe that the overdoses are directly related for the most part with the drugs. Anyone else? Other questions? Thank you, Deputy. You're Appreciate you being here this evening. Mr. Mayor, if you don't mind, I'm actually going to jump around on the city manager's report. Um, under informational items, you'll see copies of letters that I have submitted to Deputy Allender and Deputy Cruz, um, basically thanking them for their uh, over, uh, above and beyond efforts of what they're doing. Um, a lot of people in here know I lost my stepfather in September. And I often worry about my mom being home alone. And when I read this email from Sheriff Kelly about you going to Tuesday to her house and sit in time with her, it really hit home to me. So it really made me want to just thank you. You two are doing a fantastic job. It seems like every time you're here, I say that. But this time, after reading these, what you guys do and you recognize the importance of community policing. I mean, from the bottom of my heart, I thank you. This person's family definitely thank you. So please continue on doing what you're doing. I cannot think more highly of, of, of you guys. So again, hats off to you. Thank you very much. Yeah, I, I can speak for myself and I think Sheila and, and it goes along with us working well together. But, you know, as cliche as it, it sounds, I mean, no police officer, most people don't do it for the paycheck or for recognition because you can't expect those things. Um, I mean, I mean, for us, it really is about making a difference. It's about seeing, you know, the faces of people when, when you do just go, you know, something that small for something so easy for us to do sure. did hopefully make a big difference in, in her, you know, in her day or her week or whatever it may be. So we do enjoy doing things like that. And, yes. and, you know, hopefully people continue to reach out as far as if anybody needs anything and just make people know that 
you know, it, it's okay to call the police or reach out for help for something other than, you know, some sort of criminal offense. It can sure. be just a matter of, of you know, hey, I, I just I had a bad day. I, I just kind of need somebody to tell me that it's okay. And, and we hope to, you know, continue to get that community support and, and you know, such. So sure. thank you. No, thank you. And for those who don't know what happened, uh, I got an email from Sheriff Kelly detailing um, a resident here had lost her husband. She was home alone and this, this, this son, son was worried about her. So uh, he had emailed Sheriff Kelly and she graciously had stopped by and took a sympathy card. But on top of that too, her and Deputy Cruz together had made a visit to a house on Prentice. Mm -hmm. remember yes. So a little, a little boy who loves police officers. And if we got a picture taken, they left them with two handcuffs. But that's the community policing that the Sheriff and I wanted to get that visibility back. And, these two ladies are just hitting it home every single day of the week and it, that takes that shows not only you're a great police officer but a great person Thank and you. I'm all about character over skill any day so please continue on what you're doing thank you so much both of you please continue doing yes, thank sure. you you're welcome and moving on to the informational items uh, these are directed, here we go, we got some um, board renewals and updated the memorandums in there. So basically the check marks indicate that I've heard back from these individuals saying they want to continue on. If there is no check back, I am still waiting to hear back from them. So in the next couple of council meetings, we're probably going to have to address the board uh, issues. But I don't think it's going to be an issue. I just wanted to update everyone on where they stood, currently stood. And we already gave the recognition to our great deputies. Moving on with that is a memorandum for our council mayors and our citizens about what's going to happen on the first meeting in 2016. Um, a lot of us already know, but just for our citizens that don't know, uh, there will be a new election for a mayor and a new mayor, and everybody will be re-sworn in with an oath of office. And a new clerk of council needs to be, acting clerk of council needs to be reappointed as well. So those are some of the things that we can expect for the first meeting in 2016. And moving on, I compiled this great memorandum about the 2016 council date. So every date that we're going to meet is right here. So please go ahead and take a copy of this and mark it off on your calendars for the whole entire year. So we uh, know when we're going to meet. And moving on. <coughs> we had a, a, quite a few old ink cartridges that were left around the city building. Um, so I reached out to Tecumseh Local Schools District to see if they could use them. Uh, it did come back that they could use at least four of them. So we will be donating four ink cartridges to Tecumseh Local Schools that the city has no further use for. And that's a 564XL and it's one of each color, cyan, magenta, um, black, and what's the other one? Yellow. Yellow. Thank you. Uh, it works. But anyway, what a great way to give back. You know, we're not going to use them. The school district could definitely use them, so I figured, why not? Special meeting for the 2016 police contract and the 2016 CIP resolution. Possible dates are Monday, December 28th. Um, I didn't mean to put Tuesday the 29th in there, so just take that one out. And then we also have Wednesday, December 30th. Um, these need to be held after 6.30 p.m. It's either going to be here or the fire station. Um, I'll have to check the book because I honestly forgot to check the Shelter House book today. Um, it is pretty booked the month of December, um, so we'll have to maybe have to resort to having it at the fire station. Either either facility works. So you're after a date at this point, either Monday the 28th or December the 30th? Yes, sir. Would that be that correct? Yep. Kelsey, what's your date? Um, the, the, 30th. The, the 30th would be best. 30th. We still can't have the 29th? No. Well, said summers that's off the table. 30th, 30th sound good with everyone? And we do need all six there because Mr. Is Jambach is not here and we're gonna have two emergency, I mean one emergency on three. And that's the sheriff contract. So do you, we need, need all six members here. Mr. Lowry, 30th work for you? Yes. 30th? Yeah. 30th? Yes, sir. What is your signal? Sounds like the 30th. After. We need a motion then to, do we have a motion please for the 30th of December? For Mr. Mayor, to yes. make a motion to hold a special meeting on December 30th at 6.30 p.m. You want to do 6.45 to allow some time if anybody gets caught up? That'd be great. 6.45. Yeah. 6.45? So. Yeah. 6.45. Do you want to do 7? No. 6.45. No. 6.45 should be enough time. So. I'll second that. 
place. And this place here, or did you yeah, say you're going to try Firehouse? I'm going to have to look. Okay. You did you get that, Mr. Collier? 645. 645. No, 650. No, 645. What about 647? <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's enough. <laughs> let, let 645, me, uh, December 30. So and, uh, Mr. McIntyre seconded that. Mr. Lowry, Mike, you made the yes, motion, correct? Yes, I did. Who did you say made the second? McIntyre. Mr. McIntyre. No, I totally get it. But when I, when I actually write that motion out, let me know, Mr. Lowry, since you made the original motion, I will add to that to approve the 2016 police contract and discuss the CIP capital improvement program. And, you guys have a res and pass the resolution. Yes. Okay, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll add all that to it. Okay. Any issue with that? No. Okay. Is that all right with everyone? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do you call for the vote, sir? Mr. Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry. Yes. Mr. Craybar. Yes. Mr. Mike Lowry. Yes. Mayor McLaughlin. Yes. Mr. McIntyre. Yes. Past six to zero, we will meet next Wednesday the 30th at 645. Two be location, two be Will you send out an email a couple days ahead of time on that, please? To sure. remind everyone if you I'll do send so it out tomorrow. Because at that time of year, it's going to be tough. Sure. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And moving on, it looks like I jumped out of order here my informational item so we're just we're down now to welcome reception for our newly elected city councilman mr william lindsay um, that would be monday january 4 2016 at 6 15 p.m so it's going to start about 45 minutes before the regularly scheduled council meeting but it's just to come meet uh, the newly elected council member and then the uh, council members that would be coming back will um, also be here as well unless they have prior plans um, but there is a note on here and again it says swearing of all council members and the election of a new mayor and vice mayor will take place during this council meeting so there are additional invitations back there on the back please take a look at it and come join us if you can mr mayor yes just to clarify it's only those who got re-elected correctly correct it's not for well the ones who are off term no i mean anybody's coming they shouldn't say re-elected i just use the template that was there from on the computer so it should okay. say returning all right. returning council members. okay just wanted to get yeah. a check yep and the last thing is a new law new Carlisle crime stats which are attached i think mr craybacher had some questions on that but if anybody has any additional questions i'm sure that myself or deputy allender would be happy to answer for you any questions on statistics thank you sir yep. thank you that, that is for the city that manager's is it for the city manager's report. Thank you so much. Packed full of good information with all the memorandums. All right, we'll continue on then. Uh, we're at comments from members of the public. Anyone like to speak this evening? If you would please go up to the podium. Anyone at all? I just have a question. I think I can talk loud enough for them to hear me. No. I won't. I won't. Oh, okay. Talk really loud, Bill. I will. Okay. Uh, Mr. Bridge, did you say that uh, special meeting was going to be at the fire station? I said it was to be determined. Okay. Okay. I'm looking that way and I couldn't hear it. He'll send, out, e he'll send out emails for... I don't uh, want to say it's here just in case the family has rented it because it does... Oh, yes, okay. yes, and, click here. Uh, yeah. Mr. Lindsay, you should attend. For uh, sure on that. I okay. will more than likely be Good. Thank you. Why wasn't the work going to be at? I understand, sir. Thank How about you. your house? Your house. Come on over. Give me a show up right here. here. Is it the other okay. Anyone from the public like to speak? At all? Okay. Thank you all. Again, thank you for being here this evening. Uh, committee reports are none tonight. Resolutions, we have none tonight. So we'll now go into ordinances. We have two this evening. Go ahead, sir. Ordinance 15-55 public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance amending sections 1040, water of the codified ordinances of the city of New Carlisle regarding billing. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Make a motion to adopt ordinance 15-55. Second. And an explanation of this ordinance. Uh, I'm gonna let Mr. Kitko explain it to you. We did work on it together, but uh, he can explain it a lot better than me since it does fall under his um, departments. 
Okay, uh, first I just wanted to explain that anything basically italicized or bolded is something new or been rewritten. So um, any of the fees you see in under uh, 104016G are still the same, nothing's changed. What it does is clarifies that that shutoff fee, what portion of blood goes either to the water account or the wastewater account, uh, depending on what you're being shut off for. Um, and that the, the, we reached out to some other communities and we're better clarifying how our shutoff procedures are um, uh, taken on and basically our service dis disconnection fee that we already have uh, will be assessed to all unpaid accounts on that day that they're being disconnected. Uh, too many times my uh, guys will go out to shut off and someone comes running out on the phone and they're on the phone trying saying that they're making a payment and then we're being put on hold and then we either go or come back and then they never made a payment or it's a big headache. Uh, so basically the fee will be assessed immediately uh, to them and then the communication between the staff up at the city building and then the, the road crews, uh, there's no communication now, they're given a list in the morning, they go out to do the disconnections and then they come back um, and then uh, get some new turn ons that they'll do. Uh, then the next thing is reconnection of service. Right now, um, what we've always done is had someone usually stay till five on that disconnection day. Um, we have people that come in the office and we may have a, an abundancy and to possibly cut down on some overtime and uh, the communication issues that are going on with different, with uh, people who are on the shutoff list is if you pay sometime after 3 p.m. on that day, um, my guys are normally in till four and we keep one back till five, that you, we will try our best to get you back on, but now it is not a guarantee. Uh, to get you back on, like most utilities. Um, so we are looking to change that. And then we are, Mr. Bridge and myself, um, are gonna be looking to update our utility building rules and regulations. We do have some, but now what we're gonna do is take the ordinance and further clarify um, more, it's more internal uh, work we will do with the accounts and billing with my crews that are actually going out and doing the work. And uh, hopefully I explained that well enough, I can there. Uh, excuse me, entertain any questions or for any other questions for Mr. Bridge? Questions? Actually, before you Let's go, go with Mr. Reynolds first. Go before you go on, on this, let the council know we had a staff meeting on this. We had it right here at the Shelter House. It was probably been an hour, hour and a half meeting. But there has been a lot of communication issues with how we currently do things. Communication issues from citizens to our staff and major communication issues between our own staff. You know, so we are just looking to streamline this and just clean it up a little bit. Mr. Reynolds. All right. Uh, my first question is, it says forty dollars here, and it's crossed out fifty. Is this an increase in the fee? You you uh, said no, anything that was stated, updated. Yeah, as I had stated okay. in the uh, description, there was no increase in or the fees had already been the same. Originally, there's the forty dollars that scratched out. It didn't tell where it went. Okay. And that was just for water. So yeah, now I better determine it because we like have how, water. How it reads sewer. is there will be a charge of forty dollars crossed off fifty dollars. That's how it reads. So that's why I just wanted to make sure that it, was, it wasn't an uh, updated fee. And my next question is, is that it says that you guys have the uh, office policy to direct personnel to enforce codified ordinances. So I'm guessing like that's someone in your department that would be enforcing this or you or the city manager himself? Yes, it'd be okay. us. All right, sounds good. Mr. McIntyre. I've got a question on the logistics of when someone's water gets shut off. I like that there's this reconnection of service um, by 3 p.m., we're going to try to make sure people have everything running if that happens. Uh, how much communication happens with a resident who is approaching having to have their water or whatever shut off? Is it we make sure we send them letters, we call them, we get in contact with them, we have a dialogue with them? Because I'd hate to have a situation where you have somebody who just, you know, is really struggling, and, and we can all think of an, an example. Um, how does that work communication wise? Uh, what, basically, what we start off with uh, you get a bill. And then um, 30 days later, you will get a red bill um, sent to you saying that the money that from the last month is owed. And then we set up a shutoff time. Usually it's around the second week of the, that following month. Um, in the meantime, um, when someone has come in or they're late, we do have payment plans. We have options for someone to come in and set up a payment arrangement for that past due amount. If they set up that arrangement, then they can, I think it's what, uh, possibly one month, three months, they have, you can get three payment arrangements in one year. Um, so there is, there is options to not be on the shutoff list, uh, but then once you are on the list, um, we check our box first thing in the morning, make sure there's anybody who paid that night before, uh, we check all those, and then we clean the list up, and then now we'll be just sending the list out, uh, where there was some communication issues with 
when that list went out and people coming in at the last second uh, type thing. Right. Well, I'm glad to know that there's different payment options. That's great. And also glad to know that you guys are really tackling the communication problem. Um, I think that's, I'm, I'm glad to see it's going in that direction. So thank you for that. Anyone else? Mr. Yes. Lott. That ordinance speaks of people who have not paid their bill. Now, we have snowbirds in town. Do they get their water shut off? Do they come in and say, I want my water shut off for the next four months? And if so, do they pay the same price as that? Uh, there is a monthly minimum, regardless of whatever. I think it's uh, 10 bucks. I think it's a $10 minimum. So if you're a snowbird and you want your water shut off before you leave, they still pay a $10 minimum monthly bill. Right, but I'm uh, saying is the price to have it shut off and turn back on the same as what's in that order. Uh, there, this is for disconnection for unpaid bills. Right, only. that's why I'm asking that okay. question. Yeah, no, this is just for unpaid bills right. only. So it's different for someone who wants, who asks to get yeah, yeah, if you ask to shut off, there is no fee. Okay, that's what I want to know. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Uh, people can use a credit card to pay now also, can they not? Yes. Their water bills, water so Just want to put that out. Thank you. So, no other questions? I guess we should go ahead and call for the vote. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Mr. Craybacher? Yes. Mr. Mike Lowry? Yes. Mayor McLaughlin? Yes. Mr. McIntyre? Yes. Passed six to zero. And when you're ready, sir. Or does 15 56 E introduction public hearing in action tonight? An ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract for the purchase of water softening rock salt and declaring an emergency. Mr. Mayor, move yes, to sir. adopt ordinance 15 56 E. Explanation of this ordinance. This is just a, a yearly one we do for our purchase of water softening rock salt for our water department. Attached is the uh, bid that we went out. Uh, I think this is pretty much how it goes every year. And please correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Kitko. Usually down to Morton and uh, Cardhill, Cardgill. Yes. And then Morton usually comes in cheaper. So again, a yearly uh, maintenance ordinance we do every year. Okay. Questions, Mr. Rowe? Uh, do you know if this is a decrease that we're paying for rock salt or an increase, sir? Uh, this is an increase from about $109 to 122 you know, 128 I just wanted to double check, so thanks. Any other questions? I take it we have checked with other companies. There are uh, maybe there was a little discrepancy on salt, different type of salt before, is that? Uh, yeah, in, in normal road rock salt, it's a dirty salt, so there's many suppliers. Uh, in the softening salt world, there's three, mm -hmm. and North, of, which is North American, is the one that didn't bid. I did call the lady from Morton and ask why the price is up and why do I not get you know bid from North American? And basically, Morton and Carville have the market. They have the largest mining operation, which now, uh, she said, the price is going up because obviously demand is people are changing from pool chemicals to the salt saline solution style, uh, table salt, uh, regular pellet salt, and softening salt is one of their other ones, and basically the other company doesn't have enough room to supply us. And I just asked her, when's the price ever going to go down? And she said, you won't see it fluctuate like you do, because it needs to be clean. It meets a, a drinking standard, so it's not going to go down. Okay. Any other questions, anyone, please? You can call for the vote, sir. Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Mr. Craybogger? Yes. Mr. Mike Lowry? Yes. Mayor McLaughlin? Yes. Mr. McIntyre? Yes. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Pass six to zero. Okay, thank you, sir. We're now into other business. Is there other business? Council? Right. Anyone? Yes, please. Uh, Mr. Kicker, I had a question. I just didn't want to backtrack on that last ordinance. Um, not that we need it anytime soon. It looks like. how, where are we at on uh, road salt? As far as how much we have on hand? Road salt. Oh, road salt. Uh, we almost got 100 ton that we had ordered at the end of last season. Okay. At a, pretty, at a higher rate, about 140 a ton. Because uh, it happened right before that snowfall. Let's just hope that we don't have to. We don't have to order any right now. We are out for bid for a lot less. I think it's like 60 some dollars a ton. But I'd much rather not use this. All right. So, so as long as things don't change too drastically, we should be okay for the season? Oh, yes, yes. I have plenty to order if need be. Okay. Thank you. 
Final Council, any other other business? Anything at all? Citizens, anything other business? Anyone? I just want to mention one thing. Sorry, Mr. Craybacher, go ahead, sir. I just want to mention one thing in our last meeting we were talking about uh, at the very end was uh, community gardens. And, um, and, and, you know, it looks like that still is, you know, going to go ahead. And um, I've been talking to Randy off and on, you know, about that. And so our first meeting uh, of the year in 2016 is going to be the first Tuesday at 6 o'clock at the library. So if people are interested in a community garden um, and, you know, we've got OSU is going to give us guidelines and we're in you know, communication with the Extension Service a lot and Master Gardeners too. So um, just getting a little bit bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, last meeting we had Earl from Medivue uh, with us and Earl is willing to give us 400 plants. He said that's, that is his excess. <laughs> so he said he'd be willing to do it. So that's a good start. We just have to come together and get a place to put it. Hey, council, anyone else, other business? Mr. Bridge, was there, is there anything that you'd like to say about policing, anything tonight? Um, I, we will discuss the uh, police contract at the 2016 meeting. We will be starting off four deputies in 2016. Would you repeat that, please? I said we will Louder. start. We will start off with four deputies in 2016. As we recall the last meeting, Mr. We had a citizen get up and say there was a petition going around, um, and I said you had valid concerns, but a little premature because we were waiting to get the contract in. Well, we got the contract in, knowing who we're going to have and how much insurance we're going to pay, health insurance-wise. I crunched some numbers over the weekend and found out that, great. Again, if we would have just held off for that discussion because it was premature to have, or waited two weeks, we would have been in a lot better media light because that did not come across very well in the media last week as far as the petition goes. Um, but, but again, we will be starting off with four deputies. I already have the contract in hand. We will be reviewing that at the special meeting on the third. And it's my understanding you had meetings with the finance director and, we'll be, and we're able to come up with the money and find out that we it didn't had, have. Uh, the 450 that we had conservatively budgeted right. is still on the under for the, what we're expecting to bring in. It's a conservative estimate. Hopefully it brings in a little more. Uh, now, with the original contract, with the original, it was contracted services out for 360000 And I had met with Mrs. Harris, and we have now put 380 in there because the cost of four deputies would just be under 380. But if, you were, if we want to rehash this, when we had the first meeting on it, we had a set of numbers that had based off of three and four deputies, four deputies with everybody having a family health insurance plan. So we had the meeting and that's when the council decided to start off with three. Okay, so then uh, we got the actual contract in that shows what three we're getting. And then we actually had who bid it on that third position. So basically when I had a solid piece of paper in front of me that's legally binding and signed, I now know what we're going to be paying. There is no way I would have at the beginning of this whole discussion based off the numbers that Sheriff Kelly gave us for four deputies, which was at $396,000, say, yeah, let's do this, knowing we had already contracted, put in 360 for the contracted amount. So once again, once we got the contract that says who we're getting and how much we're going to pay on that health insurance, it was just a matter of plugging in additional numbers to see how much that fourth deputy would cost. So again, the concerns were valid, but they are just extremely premature. Thank you, sir, for bringing us up to date on that. Sure. Any, anyone else? Anything else? It's Gene. Oh, did you like, would you like to say something, sir? Mm -hmm. Oh, I thought I'm sorry, put your hand up. Okay. Just, I was just thinking. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Would you mind reading the other things there, please? If you would? Sure will. City offices will be closed on Christmas Eve, 1224. Christmas Day 1225 and New Year's Day 1116. The uh, next Crime Watch meeting will be Wednesday, January the 13th, the 6th. It's the, Jan it's the 13th, so note that on your agenda. At 6.30 p.m. PM here at Smith Park Shelter House. 
Uh, community events, New Year's Eve ball drop, 1231, starts at 9 p.m. downtown, and that's presented by the Heritage <coughs> of Flight Committee. Okay, if we could, if you could add another thing to that, uh, Reg, we have decided that the 28th of February is when we're going to have our next meeting, is that correct, of all the different entities, school board and the council, as well as township trustees and also the commissioners. The 28th or it's the 29th? Because somebody said something about a leap year. That 29th. Was, it's 29th. It's I beg your pardon, 29th. Yeah. 29th. It's a leap year. That's a Monday night. That's Mike's birthday. He's six now. He's doing good now. <laughs> <laughs> so you say it is here? Is it here? Here, we, you said it was open, right? Yes, it's going to be here. So that's the 29th of February. 6.30 p.m. Could, could we add that to our agendas from now on, if you would, please? Well, you guys want Subway, or do you want, like, please? What, what would be, what would you like, Council? If you talk to Just said Subway or Lee's. Hmm? If you talk to Scott, I'm sure he'll give you a deal. Yeah, whatever's cheapest. Lee's. I vote for Lee's. Anybody else? Just to let everybody know, the uh, sponsoring entity usually provides the food for the meal. It's a small meal, and each each entity does that, and then the commissioners will chip in probably every fourth time. They will whoever's having it that day. So the commissioners actually pay also. That's open to the public. We definitely like to have people here or there. Okay. Any other questions? Anyone at all? Mr. Mayor. Tonight? Yes. We should probably excuse Mr. Sandbach, should we not, even though he's obviously not here. Ooh, yeah. Even though it won't affect him at all. I mean, it won't, it won't affect him, but okay, we probably should do make it. make a motion to excuse Mr. Zambach. Right. Mr. Mayor, I move that we uh, excuse Mr. Zambach. Second. I don't think so. <laughs> he, said, he said it was a mood issue, but anyway. Yeah, but just for clerical reasons. Mr. Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry. No. <laughs> okay. You're on there, man. You have to get him to come back. It's a potential. I moved on Mr. Craybock. No. No. Mr. Mike Lowry. Yes. I wasn't expecting Mayor McLaughlin. Absolutely. I don't want him to come back from his family. Mr. McIntyre. Yes. Fast four to two. <laughs> I wasn't expecting Okay, executive session. We have none tonight. And uh, Mr. McIntyre, would you like to? Mr. Mayor? Yes. Move we adjourn. You need a deeper voice when you do it. Try, <laughs> Try it. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor? There you go. Mr. Mayor. Move we adjourn. <laughs> we are adjourned. Thank you.